Coast received a lot of money to assist people who were affected by the storm. And we'd ask that there is um, some understanding of the living situation people face both before the storm and after the storm, and an understanding of how the funds were spent, and a greater consideration on the impact removing these trailers at this point would have. And if we're advocating for diverse communities, communities that are inclusive, that welcome all people, we need to sometimes work within the, the realm of resources that people have. As the gentleman spoke at before, you know, not everyone had the same type of case management. Not everyone started from the same amount of resources. So it's difficult for everyone to be at the same state of recovery. The situation where this gentleman, for example, has nowhere to go, you know, an empty slab versus a FEMA trailer, people are in a situation where they, they are trying to fight for whatever home they have. So FEMA has some things in place to make sure people aren't living in formaldehyde trailers. We asked that the city of Biloxi think about some of the, the hoops that people had to go through and give people more time to work into a better housing situation. You've heard from all of the speakers. People start at different places. They move at different paces. And it's important that we we'll allow everybody the opportunity to get back into their home. So we want to encourage uh, the governor and other state officials. Uh, we want to, if the national FEMA director will come down and take a look at it. Whatever we can do to try to give and buy people more time to allow them to complete their recovery is what we need to do. What we are going to do now is uh, each person will have at the maximum of three minutes. If you watch the clock over to uh, my right, it will give you an idea of how much time you have. We're going to open this up, um, starting on this side of the room. Anyone wishing to address the city council, please come forward. We feel that the proposal moved by, by uh, the city comes in contrast to the Obama administration's recent announcement uh, to stall a planned eviction of families and FEMA trailers. Instead, deciding to sell a number of mobile homes and park model trailers for five dollars or less to residents and provide. 50 million in housing vouchers and federal housing case management systems to assist remaining qualified residents still in temporary housing to find their best option for permanent affordable housing. Their best option. And we feel that, that the city should be doing the same thing, trying to help. Now we, we talk about 27 possible families that uh, are being affected by this ordinance. You know, I hear the cry that, that the hurricane season is coming. And we've gone through three years of hurricane season with the possibility of a hurricane hitting this Gulf Coast. Trailers could have been uh, demolished. And we allowed it to be so because of the need of the people. And now we have less uh, mobile trailers available now. We're talking only about 41. And it, it, to me, it would appear that we can work this out better than coming up with a deadline. Deadline does not solve the problem that people need housing. Uh, yeah, there may be some folks that may be abusing the system. It always happens. It, it happens not only with people in trailers, but it happens with contractors and other folks that are getting money. There's an abuse of the system. A petition has been signed by the Biloxi citizen that, that urged the council to acknowledge that the whole ordinance would uh, greatly affect many residents, especially those with physical disabilities, members of racial minorities, and single mothers and children. Right. 
question about two hours ago, well, how much time would you need? I do not know this because I'm not in the building business. I'm working with, uh, 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 with Hope, this foundation that uh, uh, gets in their group of volunteers. And he volunteers in the labor which makes it that I can, uh, that I can afford this thing to be real. When I came out of the shelter, I didn't have a thing except the clothes on my back. I had a very large home, and it was completely gone. And uh, if you set up like that, it doesn't take a whole lot of money to, to maintain it. But uh, I put, all, put a lot of money into that, and it, it that home, and it was uh, going away. The thing of it, I'm not bragging my feet. I got the money, I got the material and everything, and this organization is not dragging their feet either. We just need a little more time. Maybe I speak for everybody. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself because uh, I, this is my situation. And uh, if you see forward to give me this time, I would be greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are a couple things that I really want to bring out in terms of this particular one. Uh, we have gone from literally thousands of trailers at one point down to the city blocks and hundreds. Now we're down to 41. We're moving in the right direction. I think if we uh, are patient enough, there is ongoing, I know for a fact, there is ongoing work on this. Uh, FEMA has, has required that every person in a FEMA trailer have to go through the case management organization. Uh, like, uh, there, there are basically uh, several throughout the area that have been contracted through what's called the MCMC program, which is a a uh, female sponsor to a case management organization. But each one of those persons is to have developed a plan of recovery. And I think uh, one of the things I heard you say earlier, Jerry, is that you know you have a curve from these case management organizations. But very often, as we put things like this on the city council, those organizations, less specifically asked, don't provide that information. I think it's important that we do get to show that, these, that people who are there, it may clear some perception that people are moving, but in fact they may have a case management plan in place, and that, that plan will also show where that person is in that process. So call the question on the amendment. All those in favor of that amendment, please if I raise the hand, 7-0. Call the question on the ordinance as amended. Uh, all those in favor, 7-0. The ordinance is amended. Chairman, we have six months. Just so this is clear on got to write it up uh, was the amendment six months, right? Six six, that's it. That's it. Okay. Six months extension of, of the time that we have and, and, and we will work out. I think the decision was somewhat a, a compromise, you know, but we would rather have not had any uh, time deadline put on uh, these uh, people who are still in those trailers. I'm pretty sure that most of them, are, the people that are living in those trailers are trying to find uh, permanent housing. Uh, a lot of them are renters uh, where there's not affordable housing for them to move into. Even though the cities have said that there's a lot of affordable housing available, uh, the costs involved in living in those apartments exceeds the majority of the people who uh, are living in those trailers' uh, pocketbook and that they're on minimum wage job making seven, eight dollars an hour and they can't afford it, cannot afford a seven, eight hundred dollars a month apartment. So as uh, the councilman asked that we work with these folks, uh, certainly with the NAACP and STEPS and a lot of the other organizations are willing to work with these people to try to make sure that they, are, they do find permanent housing and we're going to do all we can to make sure they are allowed to stay in those trailers until they do so.